Hello, Internet. Jesus loves you. My name is Cody, and this is the Christian News Show we do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But before we get into the news today, if uh, my arm doesn't flail as much as it usually does, I worked out a couple days ago, which is kind of a news story in itself. But I worked out for like the first time in forever, and so yesterday I had that feel-good pain you get like the day after you work out, and you're like, alright, feeling a little sore, this is nice. And today, my shoulder is just on fire. Like, I thought I did the proper amount of stretching, but my shoulder is definitely telling me otherwise. So yeah, maybe today my arm gestures will look like they belong to an actual human being, but I, I doubt it. And if you're wondering, I don't know why you would, but I'm just, I'm working out to be a little more healthy. I'm not trying to, like, get huge and muscular or anything. Uh, just treat your body like a temple and all that stuff. And the first thing that I want to share with you guys really isn't a news story either, but it is something that you guys, you have to see. But it's a commercial that came out about Derek Coleman. He's the fullback for the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I know, ew, gross, Seattle Seahawks, but bear with me. This guy is deaf, and he's been told his entire life that he would never be an NFL football player. He might as well give up because he is deaf. And I just, I love what he says in the commercial. He says, you know, everybody told him that he could never make it. But he was deaf since he was three, so he's not listening to him. And then he says, but now I have millions of fans cheering for me. And I can hear that. And then it's it's a Duracell commercial, so it cuts into a Duracell logo and all of that. But And I feel like the title sums it up perfectly. Trust your power. It doesn't matter what everyone else says. You can always overcome the impossible. Unless you're trying to nail Jello to a tree. Shut up. But anyways, as always, link in the description below if you want to check it out with all of my new stories. Uh, our next story is about Saeed Abedini, which I know we just talked about in our last video. But in a recent interview with CNN, the Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javed Zarif, I'm probably saying that wrong, but he was directly asked about Pastor Saeed Abedini. And he said even though there was nothing that he could do personally, there have been circumstances in the past where clemency has been granted for these kinds of situations. Meaning that if the judge is okay, that Saeed Abedini could just go home and be completely free from all of this. So it's by no means saying that this is a for sure thing that will happen, but it is the first sign of hope that Saeed Abedini has seen in a long time of there even being a chance of him getting to go home. And then in other news with another name that I'm probably going to pronounce wrong, an al-Qaeda leader in Egypt named Ayman al-Zawahri. <laughs> if you want someone to butcher names, just come to me. But this guy is a leader of al-Qaeda and he opposes fighting Christians. Now, if you watch my show, you know that this is just, this is huge news. Ever since Morsi has been taken out of office, Muslims have been very angry at Christians because they believe since Morsi is a Muslim leader that it was the Christians that were trying to kind of, you know, get him out of office. Now, that being said, a lot of the Christians in Egypt are happy that he is out of office, but they weren't the ones saying we need to get rid of him. And so, according to Amen, it is not the Christians who should be being attacked right now, it is the military who took Morsi out of office in the first place. Now, whether this is going to improve the safety of Christians in Egypt, I really don't know, but it can be hoped from seeing this. Right, for the final story of the day, I wanted to go full circle. We started with the Super Bowl, and now we are ending with the Super Bowl. I try to bring it up every year, but whenever there's a Super Bowl, there are a lot of people in motels and stuff like that, and so sex trafficking becomes a really big issue. For people that aren't aware, there are still slaves in the world, and believe it or not, there is still slavery in the United States. It's not legal, but it still happens. And usually when you're talking about slavery in the United States in modern day, you are talking about sex slavery. In most cases, you have this disgusting human being that buys a bunch of little girls and then he rents them out for people who want to have sex with them. And this isn't something that's like, it's kind of a problem. It's a huge deal. And I say all of this for a few reasons. One is just to bring awareness to you so that if you do want to fight this, you can go down to love146.org. I put it in the link in the description below. They are definitely my go-to organization when I think about this issue. So if you guys want to go check them out, they fight here in the United States. Like I said, this happens every year. So just a few updates on this annual thing. Organizations like Live 146 are going around to motels that people will be staying at for the Super Bowl and helping those motels see signs of this kind of thing happening. And then also for the Super Bowl in general, security has been heightened all around, not necessarily for sex trafficking, but just everything. So the hope is that people knowing there are going to be more police officers on duty, there's going to be more aircraft in the sky watching, all of that kind of stuff, maybe that'll lessen the activity a little bit. And also, there's just no way that you can financially support the cause. You can pray and you can spread awareness. Both are very important. That brings us to the question of the day. And the question of the day today is uh, Broncos or Seahawks? Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Spoiler alert, it's the Broncos, or at least it better be. Anyways, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I always love to see what you guys have to say. If you don't want to answer that question, you could bring up something else that I talked about today that's probably a little 
more important. My name is Cody Garvin, bringing you Christian news in a not so boring kind of way, in closing, let the haters hate, let the Christians pray. And to everybody, like, subscribe. I'll see you later, and God bless. I can't even, like, like this hurts right now, and this. <laughs> Bye.